Hey everybody, I'm just going to be doing a little news roundup for you here, uh, things I find interesting uh, from today and past couple days maybe. Um, <clears throat> top story, uh, Hurricane Hillary is looking to make landfall in California, so San Diego, Los Angeles, possibly even Vegas could be receiving uh, ridiculous amounts of rain. They're saying the Palm Springs area is going to get a year's worth of rain in less than 72 hours. So, um, I lived in Southern California for seven years. Uh, that is where my wife is from. She's from Los Angeles. And, um, <clears throat> yeah, they get a lot less rain than anywhere else I've lived. They get a lot less rain than most of the rest of the country. So, I did witness a few times a little bit of flash flooding there. You know, the it, it doesn't drain very quickly because they don't get tons and tons of rainfall. So, when they get a whole bunch all at once, yeah, it tends to pile up in the streets and then taper off over a day or so. So <clears throat> that's going to be a real issue for certain parts of California, bringing insane amounts of moisture to places like San Diego, Los Angeles, and Las Vegas. I think they said the wind speed is upwards of 100 miles an hour. So I, I believe... Los Angeles has received tropical force storms, um, tropical force winds in the past. I don't think they've ever had an official hurricane. I could be wrong about that. I know that that is not the norm. You always see the hurricanes on the East Coast and the Gulf Coast. Um, but coming up from the South Pacific like that is fairly rare, at least for it to be a fully developed hurricane and not simply a tropical storm. And I think my doggy wants to go into the next room. So hang on a second. You want to go in here? You want to say hi to the people? This is my assistant, Alfred. Say hi, Alfie. <laughs> Sorry about that. Where were we? Hurricane Hillary. So, now, <clears throat> this brings to me brings to blah, 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 brings me to my um, next topic. In light of the the Maui fires that were just utterly devastating and really scary. I don't know if you really looked into what happened there. There's hundreds dead. There are a lot of people saying that it's really the numbers being suppressed. It's more like 1,500. I've heard. Um, just the devastation that took place in such a short amount of time and the videos coming out on Twitter or X or whatever the heck it is. Um, really sad. Now, there are a lot of people saying they believe it was directed energy weapons. Um, I think that that's entirely possible and I, I believe this Hurricane Hillary could be a result of weather manipulation as well. I, I don't believe in man-made global warming in the traditional sense. I think um, global, well, the average temperature may be getting warmer, but it's obviously getting more and more intense. The summers are hotter, the winters are colder, the storms are worse, there's more flooding and more droughts depending on what area you're in. Now, it's very interesting. There is a really great... Um, true stream media video talks about weather manipulation this all goes back to the the 30s and 40s they were doing experiments this is all documented in mainstream news there were these doctors nobel prize winners admitting that they were not just seeding clouds but creating storms and floods and i'll link below it's it's very much worth a watch um there's another guy that i recommend if you're not sold on the weather manipulation thing um <clears throat> zachary k hubbard and gematria effect news 
he's he's also got a YouTube channel. A couple of them, actually. Uh, he's always talking about in 1952, I believe it was the uh, the UK's Royal Air Force admitted to manipulating the weather. They had this tech fully operational in 1952. It's over 70 years ago. So just imagine how much more advanced the tech has gotten. And they're here admitting that they could cause floods, cause droughts, and here we are in 2023 with a lot of weird weather patterns. There are floods, there are droughts. At the same time, in regions that are very close to one another, um, it really isn't that far-fetched. If they were telling people that they, they could do it 70 years ago, uh, and now suddenly they want you to believe that it's science fiction, and, you know, what motive would they have for setting fire to, um, what is it, Lahaina, the, the area in Maui that burnt up? Well, those, that real estate was owned by people who wouldn't sell, and the elites wanted it. And um, the, the tinfoil hatters are saying they, they took it from them. And there's all kinds of rumors that the insurance companies aren't paying these people out and that the government's going to seize control of the land and it'll probably be developed by BlackRock and companies like that. Who knows? Um, I, I strongly encourage you to look into um, Zach Hubbard's work with Gematria kind of proving that they are rubbing it in our faces, that they're manipulating the weather, and also Truthstream Media's video. Um, I think this is probably... A, a little more accessible to the average um, truth seeker. Um, I mean, Zach, Zach's whole thing is, is talking to truth seekers too. And, and he's like a computer. He's like a walking computer. He knows every word as a number and he rattles off the numbers like crazy. And I, I totally agree with most of what he says, but I think uh, true stream media is, you know, they're, they're showing these documents from the, I believe these are from the fifties and sixties just straight up saying yeah we're manipulating the weather yeah we're trying to manipulate the weather yeah we've done experiments and caused we've caused floods we've caused hurricanes and they were putting it up in in the context of using it on our enemies that someday we could you know if we were at war like right now i guess nato wants to slow down russia so they could make I don't know, they could make eastern Ukraine flood or something like that. But that's not happening. It's like they're using it on us. They're trying to... Well, it seems like everything that's happening now is... The, the end that they're searching for is to crush the middle class. To make the middle class lifestyle unaffordable for the average American. They want to go back to a new feudal system. Along those lines, economic news, India was able to trade for oil in Indian rupees. And as many of you know, the petrodollar is one of the things that keeps the U.S. dollar propped up. It, most countries have to trade in U.S. dollars because it's up until now, it's the world's reserve currency. Uh, things are moving forward with BRICS. It sounds like more and more nations are jumping on board. And the fact that India, huge country, was allowed to trade with the UAE in Indian rupees is not a good sign for the dollar. That is another nail in the coffin for the U.S. dollar's worldwide supremacy and, uh, and reserve currency status. <clears throat> For the first time, a NATO official is hinting that NATO may be willing to sacrifice some parts of Ukraine to Russia in order to achieve peace. Uh, let see, could be the surrender of certain territories, such as Crimea, and I'm fairly certain that I mean, the Russians already see Crimea as theirs. They would definitely want the Donbass region as well. That's uh, Donetsk and Lugansk. 
And I don't think Putin's going to uh, settle for anything less than that at this point. But that's interesting. People are saying it could be, you know, we're coming up to re-election time for Biden and some other NATO leaders. And so uh, the American people might be a little bit like, hey, what do we have to show for our trillions of tax dollars that have gone to Ukraine? We don't have peace. We, they, they haven't defeated the Russians like they implied that they would. Anyway, some interesting headlines. None particularly optimistic about um, <laughs> the current state of affairs. Um, we know that the, I guess it was the S and P 500. One of the, one of the big markets was flashing a warning indicator. They dropped below their 50-day floating average, um, which is a sign that things could keep going down, could be a sign of bearishness. So I, I believe from what I've seen and from uh, just the chatter I've seen on the internet that uh, real estate is slowing down in most areas, not everywhere, but a lot of areas are. Uh, the inventory is stacking up and sales are slowing now that is not true everywhere so if you're in a really hot market uh, for now you you could still be seeing those ridiculously high numbers houses selling for more than asking uh, but I think that that is coming to an end soon just my professional opinion so if you're looking to buy a house I say wait because I think prices are are gonna I mean some people are saying it's gonna be fire sale prices in next months or years um, I definitely think they're coming down can't guarantee that but I don't see them staying over inflated like they are for very long anyway let's uh, cross our fingers that Hurricane Hillary isn't too bad but I don't know <laughs> I Looks, looks like it's heading straight for San Diego and L.A. to me. <laughs> Which would be, I don't know, my, my in-laws are still there, so. Uh, L.A.'s crazy enough without hurricanes, I'll tell you that much. They got mudslides, wildfires, mountain lions, gangs, the worst traffic in the country. I don't think they need hurricanes added to that list. <laughs> All right. Oh, and earthquakes, too. I remember it was 2011, I think, when... Was that... Which which hurricane was that? I'm not going to remember. Um, it, hit, it hit New Jersey, and uh, we were in the Philly area at the time. And there was also that East Coast earthquake in 2011. And they happened within a couple days of each other. So people started saying, oh, they're inventing new natural disasters, quake canes So let's hope Southern California is not in for a quake cane All right. McRodge signing off. <laughs>